Hey guys, my name is Nose for Kitty and welcome back to Red Embrace Hollywood. Uh, we just left Marcus's little shop and we're going to figure out whether or not we want to go see Heath or go home. Heath or home. Heath or home. Let's go see Heath because I feel kind of bad that I'm kind of mean to him all the time. But look, I've said this before. I don't do clingy. I don't like clingy. I don't like whiny. I'm just... Yeah. Nope. But we need information and I mean I guess we could just talk to him. There's no harm in talking. So I headed for Saturnalia, wondering if Heath would be around tonight. Besides, we don't know if Heath will even be there. Sue <gasps> I just noticed the Suspiria <laughs> poster. That's cool. Inside, the bar was fairly calm, or was calm and fairly quiet, with only a few vampires lounging around. I glanced around bit for Heath, but I didn't spot him anywhere. Maybe he'd stepped out for a while. Chats with patrons. I began to roam around the bar and drift into conversations, mingling with the vampire, various vampire patrons. Tonight's crowd seemed to be mostly Golgotha, and they treated me with a mixture of interest and suspicion whenever I approached. I decided to... Do my best to charm them. Mustering all of my ch charisma... Charisma. <laughs> I almost said char charmisms, and I... Uh, no. Once again... Mustering all of my charisma, I wandered up to the various groups of Golgotha, hoping I could win them over. They seemed suspicious of my intentions at first, but eventually some of the vampires warmed up to me, offering their unusual insights. Not all of them were friendly, but most were willing to at least exchange a few words with me, even if it was mostly from politeness. And honestly... That sumo wrestler was amazing. It was like biting into mochi or pizza dough or something. So soft and squishy. <laughs> That's disgusting, Paulson. You need professional help. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> As I drifted by the last group of Golgotha in the corner, I heard them engage in a passionate argument. Hey! You! With the dark hair! One of them suddenly raised her voice, snapping her fingers and pointing at me. You're gonna be the tiebreaker, okay? Quick! What's the best potty type to feed from? Ooh. Ooh, baby. Um... Are we talking personal preference? <laughs> Want them to have meat on their bones. I enjoy thin lift ones, not much. <laughs> What's this? Oh, fuck! I didn't want that. Can I go back? Can I go back? No, I want to go back. No, I want to go back! I'm gonna take that as a vote for the fat ones. What? You didn't say anything about the fat ones? What's wrong with you? They started grumbling at each other again, apparently forgetting my existence. Fuck me, I for- Ah, oh, I hit the wrong one. I thought that was like a more options thing, I'm stupid. And with that, I would more or less passed every group that seemed interesting in tonight's flock of patrons. Okay, well, I kn well, at least the Heath wasn't here to fucking whine in my ear. I left the bar's quiet ambiance, returning to the street. Time had passed quickly, and the night was almost already o already almost over. Time to head back. 
It had been a fairly quiet night, at least in contrast to my earlier adventures. Though I had a feeling the reprieve wouldn't last. Does it ever? <laughs> Uh-oh. When I returned to the hotel, I expected Cherise to be in the meeting room, like before. Instead, the clerk at the front desk handed me a note when I walked in. Apparently, Cherise was out of town again. I settled down on my bed and pulled the note out of its pristine envelope, scanning over it. Callie. I received a call from Miss Elusia earlier. Excellent work. Enclosed as a token of my gratitude, expressed in dead presidents. Don't spend it all in one place. Turn the envelope upside down and out fell a bundle of bills. A shark shockingly large amount of money, too. Shockingly. Your next task will be ready soon. Keep up on the keep up the admi admiral performance, and one day you might end up as my right hand woman. I do not want, do not want. As a final word of warning, there's been another murder. The mutilation was identical to the body you found in the sewers, except instead of an Isari agent, the victim was a Golgotha. Be on your toes, Callie. We do not know where they t will strike next. I'll see you soon, Locke. Well, I hope it's not Zhang, because that's terrifying. Well, at least I hadn't immediately been thrown on another errand, which meant I had some time to do as I pleased. Maybe Randall would pay me a visit tomorrow, or else I could explore that invitation I'd gotten from Zhang. The more I thought about it, the more curiosity and caution pulled me in opposite directions. Meeting with the Golgotha leader wasn't a bad idea, in theory. He might have useful information. I just wasn't sure what to expect. Someone who lived in a graveyard had to have unique tastes, to say the least. I'm sorry, if I were a vampire, a fucking mausoleum would probably be awesome. With those last uncertain thoughts circling in my in my mind, I let sleep take me for another night. Oh. Ring, ring. My deathly nap was cut short by the phone nearby. I lurched upright and reached out for the receiver, holding it to my ear. Who the fuck is it? Hey! Callie, is that you? Randall, this is a surprise. Sure is. For both of us. I didn't think they'd let me through to your room. But they're probably wiretapping this call, so I'm not going to talk about all the filthy- Oh my god. <laughs> Good morning! Hello! Hi! Oh, I'm like spiking the mic big time. Okay. But they're probably wiretapping this call right now, so I'm not going to talk about all the filthy things we did the other night. Even though Cherise would probably like to hear that. Randall let out a sudden roar of laughter that nearly deafened me and probably scared the pants off of any silent eavesdroppers. Anyway, rise and shine, kid. Sorry if I woke you up. How do you feel about coming out to help me with something tonight? Good chance for you to get out of that prison hotel. Of course, just say the word and I'll be there. That's what I like to hear. I knew I could count on you, kid. I could almost envision the proud grin spreading over his face. Truth is, some vampire hunters have been sniffing around not far from the beach. They're different guys from the photo crew earlier. Probably part of the group that's been harassing us for the past few weeks. His tone grew more serious and slightly longer, hesitant pauses separated his words. Normally, they're not a problem, but they're getting smarter. Hunting us down individually as instead of as a group. Getting better rifles and equipment. Guns, really? What fucking vampires get taken down by guns, dude? We've had some injuries and some losses. Randall briefly went silent. 
When he spoke again, his voice had regained its firm confidence. So, tonight, we need to scare him off as good as we can. Make sure they won't pose a problem for us anymore. Good opportunity for you to see with your own eyes what we're up against. And Queen Bitch shouldn't mind, since hunters are out to get all of us. Alright, I'm ready. Where should I meet you? Damn, with that kind of attitude, you deserve a promotion. should write you a recommendation letter for Charisse. Randall let out a grovelly chuckle that rasped into my ear. Good lord. Alright, meet me on the beach as soon as you can. Oh, and Callie, maybe don't wear your nice shoes. You never know how things will end up. I think I have like one outfit. After we said our goodbyes, I quickly threw on my clothes and hurried outside, wondering just what to expect. I was finally going to see these hunters Heath had mentioned a while back. I wonder if they were anything like the vampire hunters I'd seen in movies. Sorry, but the vampire hunters I see in movies don't carry guns. Unless you count the Frog Brothers, but those are holy water guns and it's a little bit different. Short taxi ride later, I arrived in the San er, at the Santa Monica Beach. As I plodded through the Santa Randall's beach house, I noted a noticed a small group gathered outside it. There was no mistaking that eye-catching figure and the adoring crowd around him. Kitty! Gosh, you're pretty. There you are, newbie. Glad to si you decided to turn up. When I wandered up to Randall's side, he reached out to squeeze my shoulder, letting his large palm rest there for a few moments. Hey, Callie! Aw, oh, man. Randall, you didn't tell us we could bring a date. The other Mavhark playfully called out, apparently in high spirits. They all looked lightly armed, with a, f a few with pistols, some with knives, Maybe they preferred hand-to-hand -hand combat. Combat. That's a B, not a P. Date? Who said anything about dates? Callie's one of us. You guys know that. She could use a little practice defending territory with a group. Let's teach those hunters not to mess with us. Once we show them that we're not going to cower like scared dogs, I think they'll learn shit pretty quick. Chorus of murmurs and growls and meet in agreement rang out in response. They're probably mostly for Randall's comment and not mine, but I still caught a few approving glances. Alright, listen up. Our scouts earlier said they saw hunters back in the city, not too far from the pier. We should be fine as long as nobody gets caught out, but those fuckers seem to know exactly when we're going to show up. And a bullet to the heart isn't something you can just laugh off. I guess. When Randall addressed this with, more seri with a more serious, intense gaze, the group quickly grew quiet. I could see a number of them shifting foot from foot. From foot to foot. Fingers clench clenching into fists. We're gonna split up to try to flank them. You guys go ahead and let the uh, hunters trail you through the streets, while me and Callie follow from behind. His voice was low, but so confident and determined that no one even batted an eye when he mentioned me as his partner of choice. If everything goes according to plan, we'll trap him in in an alley and deal with him there. No innocent witnesses will get in the way. We gotta put an end to this shit tonight, so for all your clanmates' sakes, don't do anything stupid. Everyone got it? Oh god, that scared the fuck out of me. <laughs> yeah, let's go! Get him! Come on, let's get him! Hell yeah, what are we waiting for? As the group quickly worked back on an e back into an eager, loud fervor, wrestling with excitement to turn the hunters into prey, Randall glanced down at me, his brow knitting slightly. Come on now. You ready for this, newbie? 
I called you down because I knew you could handle it. I like to believe people are a lot stronger than they think they are. Randall, I was born ready. Let's go. Man, I sure love that spirit of yours. Makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Don't even know why I bother worrying about you. Cause you love me! Cause you love me, that's why. Alright everyone. Let's show these cocksuckers that you don't fuck with Mavar. And with one last rally and cry, we left the beach for Santa Monica streets. Randall and I stayed behind, letting the rest of the group go ahead. We could track their scents afterwards. Ooh, pretty music. After a few minutes had passed, we began to cautiously follow them. At Randall's request, I kept a careful watch for anyone on the street who looked suspicious. Of course, considering all the unusual types at 1am in Santa Monica, it wasn't a particularly easy task. So what if these hunters are not, you know, human? When we rounded a corner, Randall suddenly tensed beside me, his eyes narrowing into slits. Curious! I followed his gaze to the other side of the street, where a quiet, oddly dressed group was briskly walking along. I strained my ears. I thought I could hear the metal or the sound of metal rattling, the clicking of guns or knives. There they are. Keep walking. Don't lose sight of them. He muttered softly, his eyes full of sharp focus, like a wild animal wary of an attack. They smell angry. Yeah, they do. Probably think they're on some kind of holy righteous quest. Who the hell knows? Randall's upper lip faintly or curled faintly in scorn. Or maybe amusement. I couldn't really tell. We trailed the hunters along the road, keeping enough a distance to not attract their attention. Luckily, the streets were still flecked up with people wandering around, so we weren't entirely alone. If anything was gonna, or if everything was going according to plan, Randall's clanmates were leading us to a good ambush spot. If, you know, if. Just then, one of the hunters glanced over his shoulder, straight at Randall and me. Without warning, Randall suddenly reached out to grab my hand. His bandaged palm pressed against mine, and he wrapped his large, callous fingers around my own. Randall shot me a surprised look when I gently squeezed our hands together. Well, this was his idea. He couldn't blame me for making the most of it. For a tense few moments, the hunter's eyes seemed to stare right through us. He had to have guessed. We definitely looked suspicious, especially since Randall didn't exactly blend into his surroundings. But, dude, he's a dude. Like, he's a big-ass, like, surfer-looking Jesus dude. Like, come on. Also, I am totally calling it now this man was crucified at some point. He's either Jesus or a disciple, because, bruh, why does he have holes in his hand? Hello? But finally, after what felt like forever, the hunter's gaze shifted to someone else on the street. The group kept walking instead of turning around to blow our brains out, which was probably a good sign. <sighs> Randall let out a long, relieved exhale by my side. Rather than releasing my hand though, he kept his grip tight, pulling me along a little faster. <laughs> so what are we going to name the baby? <laughs> Little blood sucker kind of has a ring to it, don't you think? We'll pull the others on it later. For now, let's just keep going. 
Fucking. God. Hurrying down the street, we followed the hunters into a wide alley. Was this the ambush point? I didn't catch the scent of Randall's clanmates down the road, so they must have turned off somewhere. Maybe the Maivar took a shortcut, or else the hunters had lost them? This is not an exit! When we were halfway down the alley, the human group disappeared around a corner. The next second, Randall stopped dead in his tracks. Fuck. I got a real bad feeling all of a sudden. He paused, closing his eyes. It seemed like he was visibly straining his senses, as if to smell or hear or detect something in, it, in the distance. We have to keep going, we might not reach them in time, or maybe we should turn back. Well, this feels like a lie, because if I don't know what's going on, and- ugh. Shit. Callie, come here! Without warning, Randall grabbed me by the waist, pulling me into a tiny opening off the alley. Say nothing. Without struggling, I would let Randall tug me around the corner. Hello, suspect. Ooh, that's not good. Oh, I thought it was ca crashing. Oh god, that scared me. Hello? Do I have to click? Okay. Quiet. His arms squeezed around me, pulling me against- er, closely against his chest. A few moments later... Down this way! Quick! They followed us! I know it! I saw them come this way! White footsteps quickly approached us from around the corner, along with hushed, hushed voices. I could smell humans. The hunters. They were getting closer. Our hiding spot could barely fit one person, let alone two, but Randall clutched me tightly enough that we managed to squeeze in. He didn't breathe, and I heard no heartbeat in his chest, but every muscle in his body felt tense to its limit. Damn it! I know they were just here! Well, where the fuck are they then? On the rooftops? No. They must be hiding. Their footsteps grew closer, slow and cautious. I couldn't tell how many there were, but it sounded like more than two were heading for us. Silently, Randall reached for the back of his belt, pulled out a knife, the same knife I'd returned to him during our first meeting. His fingers grasped my wrist, and he nudged the knife's handle against my palm as if coaxing me to take it. He's taking the knife. He was offering me his beloved knife to protect myself. I couldn't just refuse it, so I tucked it inside my own belt. If someone came around the corner, we could lash out together and make an escape. And Randall was a Mavar, so he probably preferred fighting with his fists. Hey! Hey, over here! Right outside our vo hiding spot, a voice hissed out. Less than ten feet away. Footsteps getting closer, scent of humans, of anger, right beside us. Wait! They went down! Over here! The garage, quick! The cry echoed through the alley. Time seemed to grind to a standstill. Neither Randall or nor I moved a single muscle. I could still sense the hunters beside us, listening, hesitating. Ah, shit. I'm coming. Until finally the footsteps turned, dashing off into the alley. Oh boy. Fuck. We stayed silent, waiting for them to disappear. There was a distant cra crash, a metal scraping sound, and then nothing. Damn it! Those 
dumbasses didn't stick to the plan. Randall let out a, an abrupt hiss, releasing me from his grip and darting around the corner. I followed him around, or er, followed him quickly, not wanting to be left behind with the hunters prowling, prowling around. Sounds like they went to the garage instead. We're gonna have to go down too. We're gonna have to wait till the next part to see what happens. So, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, or any game suggestions, please feel uh, free to leave them down in the comment section below and I'll see what I can do about playing things. Um, and please, please, please feel free to subscribe if you're not already because I would love to have you around and I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye!